I live in rural New Zealand and survive completely on solar power. I did not connect to the main power supply. And the reason really is price. Last night we had some serious rain and all the leaves from that tree fell onto these solar panels. So that will affect the amount of power I gather. I'll have to take all these leaves off. Let me break down the cost for you. This is a two bedroom new build house. And when it was being built, I had my heart set on connecting to the power. The reason was we had been living on four solar panels and four deep cycle batteries for, I don't know, about for three or four years at that point and a lot of the time the generator needed to be started or we we had to be very cautious with the power usage and i was getting a bit over it daydreaming about bread makers etc and i was also concerned that moving into a house that had a lot more lights and a lot more power plugs that we would hit that same problem very very quickly um, it has actually been okay. I went next level and it's so far been great actually. <laughs> but that was my reasoning for wanting to connect to the power at that time. So let me talk about what I learnt when I contacted the local company who looks after the power lines. First off it took six months for the company to get back to me with the quote. So it is a slow process. I also needed my electrician involved to send some info to them. When I got the quote it was for two power poles along the road because the power line is in a neighboring farm. And that would have just got to the letterbox and then I would have needed the electrician to go along my very long driveway up to the house. I'm on one hectare of land or about 2.2 acres and the letterbox is on one end of the land and the house is at the other. I didn't even get to the stage of asking the electrician how much that would have been. So for the two poles and the transformer and the workman, it came to $32,354.30. I was all set to accept that, but luckily the guy was emailing pointed out in the notes that I would kind of hadn't clipped. It said, please allow a PC sum of 15,000 plus GST. This was just in case when they dug the ground for the poles, they decided they needed to do more work because this is quite a pharmacy area. What I learned was PC sum means prime cost sum which means uh, estimate cost hasn't been finalized or where the exact price is unknown at the contract stage. So it gave them a bit of leeway to say, oh, actually there is this extra cost for installing the poles. So the guy gave me some examples in this area where one job only cost 7,000. So it wasn't 15,000, it was 7,000. Whereas there was another job where it cost an extra 25,000, but the uh, client only had to pay 15,000 extra. So 15,000 plus GST is 16,875. So all up, it was looking more like to get power to my letterbox was going to cost me $49,229.30. Plus, getting the electrician to run the wiring, it, it was going to be over $50,000. And then my monthly power bill would have started. This area has a monthly rental bill as well. So you, even if I used no power whatsoever, I would still be charged a monthly rental fee for the lines. So it started being very, very expensive to have power. <laughs> I then contacted Gridfree about their kits to get a comparison. I was interested in their 12 panels, 12 deep cycle battery kit. I felt like 
that would have enough grunt to survive or live comfortably on solar. They came back saying they had a new product coming out with 12 panels and two lithium batteries in a casing that was already half done. <laughs> but the kit, the TUI kit, plus the electrical bill for the electrician to do the last installment, plus my handyman of three days of work helping me install the panels and run the wiring to the house. It would have been probably $25,000. So that was half the cost, half the cost for just installing or just connecting to the main grid without the bills on top. <laughs> the advantage with the solar as well was there was no monthly power bills. That was it. It's just running until you need to one day upgrade the system. <laughs> so looking at the figures like that made me realize going solar was the way to go. <laughs> Another factor that influenced my decision was the time it took. It had taken six months for me to get a quote from the power lines company. And then in their notes, it said it would probably take two months or more to get the transformer. But then further down in the notes, it said for some parts, it might take four and a half to five and a half months to get the parts. And then they would need to book the job. So it was starting to look like it could be six months before I could have power in the house at that point. Whereas they had the stock and when, once I paid, it, it would have been one week to get the solar kit. <laughs> so that was another huge influence. It would have been quite a challenging six months actually. Yeah. <laughs> It did make life a whole lot easier just having the solar power up and running that fast. I feel like I need to double check this fact, but when I was looking at the figures, I had asked a local family what their monthly power bill was, and I had worked out that it would take about seven years of paying that monthly bill to pay off the solar kit. So that's without the 50,000 to connect the house to the power lines. It was about seven years of bills to pay off the kit, if that is interesting. And if, if, I, if my memory is correct. <laughs> so that's the big question. If you don't have a huge bill to connect to the power grid, is seven years uh, an okay, acceptable uh, timeline. Because you need to factor in the unknown, like will your kit still be working as well in seven years time? An interesting thing I have learnt from talking to different people, I think definitely go lithium batteries. What my brother has found with his kit is he's accidentally damaged his deep cycle batteries a couple of times when the batteries dropped too low and it does affect them going forward so they, they never work quite as well whereas lithium batteries are a bit more forgiving so if you've got deep cycle batteries chances are they will not survive seven years I think the average lifespan for them is about five years so those are some things to factor in but from my own perspective it makes so much sense compared to 50k to even connect to the power. <laughs> yeah, it's nearly one year that I've had this kit and it's amazing. <laughs> I highly recommend lithium batteries. It will be very interesting to see how I find this first full winter. I will be planning to do a video at some point to share that experience. Yeah. And the last influence was, for some odd reason in this area, we do seem to get quite a few power cuts, which doesn't affect me being on solar. So that's just another little influence. <laughs> so did you find that interesting? 
was there a surprise? I certainly found it was a surprise of the cost of joining the, the grid versus solar power. I think it really works out if you are quite far away from a power line. Yeah, so far I am happy with my decision to go solar.